we want to welcome you into the 2020 new year well 2020 has come 2019 has gone i want to start this program by saying what's new about the 2020 and to make this program and give it another angle in this new year i want to give you a scenario of a match now this is a cricket match we all like cricket so i'm giving you an example just to understand how important this 2020 is and what are the rules to play in this game 2020 visualize a cricket match there's a a team and there's a b team right now imagine a stadium and in that stadium there is a cricket team which is batting and there's a cricket team there's a team which is bowling the aim of the batting team is to hit many runs the aim of the bowling team is to finish the batting so there's two teams there there is also a team or there is also people in the stadium who are cheering now they are cheering for the batting team one side one group is cheering for the bowling side so that's the scenario but among this whole group the whole game is controlled by two people who are the umpires now this two people determine the game now let me talk about these two people for a for a minute to just give you a perspective of how this new year could be now these two people are not governed by the cheer crowd of the batting team batting team they don't get swayed by the cheer crowd of the bowling team these two people who are the umpires are not swayed by the batsman or the bowler they have a set of rules and they determine how the rules will be played now in this 2020 the question is in which part of the game are you in are you a batsman trying to get more runs or are you a bowler trying to finish the batsman or are you a chairman trying to cheer for one group or are you deciding the fate of the game the two people who are umpires are governed by a different set of rules it doesn't matter what people say around them it doesn't matter who's winning or losing what does matter is they determine the game and they determine how the game will be played now that's why we say this new year is a great year to start but joining me in the studios today is dr pradhan and we have titled this program match fixing now it's a little bit technical wrong word but we will explain to you yes. why this new year is match fixed dr pradhan it's a pleasure and honor to thank talk you. to you thank you thank you ashwin for having me on this program the last program we spoke on the christmas day as yes. checkmate yes in the new year 2020 has come 2019 has gone we are talking about match fixing what do you understand by this word match fixing? It's very interesting to see the promises of God. Right. Well. For example, Bible says, thanks be to God who always leads us into triumph in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? At the end of the road, there is triumph. Mm -hmm. Bible says you are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. What does that mean? Victory is already determined. The result is determined. Determined. For mm -hmm. you... The victory is already determined by God. And that is the understanding with which we must go to the next year. Mm. How 2019 has gone, it's a different matter altogether. Yeah, for some it would have been good. Would, yes. For, for some, some it would have been bad. For some it would have been neutral or however it is. Correct. But we know the end of it is going to be victory. Mm -hmm. How do you say the end of it will be victory? And, 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 and this match fixing is actually a very tricky a very yes. uh, very dirty word in the game of yes, cricket in the game of cricket but why do we say this could be a game changing uh, thing when we know that we are winning how does this work from a biblical standpoint of view this gives us strength to stand mm -hmm. this gives us hope this tells us that the life is not over mm -hmm. if you remember in last program you used that word the game is not over yes though the chips may be down at this moment Micah chapter 7 verse 8, Micah mm. says, O my enemy, do not rejoice over me. Mm. If I fall down, I will rise up. Mm. 
Okay. If I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light unto me. What does that mean? The game is not over. The game is not over. Yes. But the game is also governed by some rules. Yes. Yeah. Now, we, the rule yeah. is this, that when you are in Christ Jesus, mm. greater is he who is in you. Mm. What we need to know is, however the situation may be around you today, it's not going to remain the same. Mm. It is going to change in your favor. Mm. Because Bible in Jeremiah 29, 11 said, I know the plans I have for you. To Means prosper. To God is planning. Okay. Plans to prosper. Plans to not, not, not to do evil to you. Mm. To give you a favorable end. Mm. That is match fixing, Ashwin. That way, that's why we call it match, match fixing. fixing. Because we know the result is going to yes. be good. Okay. If you see some of the examples in the Bible also, you will begin to wonder why certain things happen in their life. Mm. But ultimately you will know it's a match fixing. It's match fixed. Okay. In, 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 in the book of John chapter 7 yeah. verse 42, mm. I would like to read that for uh, our audience. Mm. And John is a very interesting uh, writer, you know. Yes. Um, he writes a lot of details which is not found some in the Luke. And yes. Of course, Luke is a more elaborate writer. Uh, Luke writes it for Theophilus, who is a government official. Yes. But John's angle is a little different. Different. Yeah. He, he talks, you know, from a revelation Correct. point of view. Correct. Like, uh, you know, in the beginning was the word. And, yeah. and he wants to be very clear saying, this is the Messiah. Yes. Guys, let's not beat the, beat the bush. Beat around the bush. Yes. He's, the, he's the person. You cling on to him, you have victory. So he's very direct. Correct. Yeah. So let's talk about See, this. Uh, 42 verse in 7 chapter of John, it says, mm. Has not the scripture said that the Christ comes from the seed of David mm. and from the town of Bethlehem where David was? Very specific. Now, Jesus is explaining this to the people who have not yet understood. Mm. Now, if you see the birth of Jesus Christ, we saw few of the things during the Christmas program. Correct. How the degree, a decree of Augustus forced Mary and Joseph. Mm. Joseph is the descendant of David mm. to go to Bethlehem. Correct. Their journey was not easy, mm. tough, difficulties, but they went with a promise that God gave to Mary. You are highly favored, blessed amongst all the women, God is with you. Mm. Though through the tough times, it was leading to the fulfillment of the promise of God. Correct. So what we see is Augustus, Herod, wise men, Mary, Joseph, all were put in such a way that this promise of 742 of John be fulfilled. Christ, descendant of David, born in Bethlehem. Mm. Match fixed, even before it started. So even before the game started. Yes. Let's also talk about... Uh, as much as we say and talk about, uh, yes, match is fixed, yes, victory is ours. But then many people in the game, you know, uh, even as they are playing, yes, uh, they come with a very, with a very angle that you know what, what if this happens? What if that happens? Correct. What if I lose? What if I? It's not. It's not from angle of, yes, let's go towards it on a winning side. Yes. So yes, God is with us. It's always with questions. And we have to take a short break. But my question is, how can 2020 be different and more prosperous for me, more good for me? Yes. Because we said God has good plans. He's not saying God has plans. God, God is saying it's got good, good plans. plans. So how can 2020 be good plans for us? And what are the rules to play? See, okay. uh, as I gave you the example of the two empires who determine the game, now they are governed by a set of rules. Yes. They will not compromise. Yes. They will never compromise. Now, I think somewhere down the line, 2020, instead of we determining the game, we end up playing the game. Hmm. See, the, the, umpires, Correct. the umpires determine the success of the game. So, we are called to be like the umpires not to be as a cheerleaders. Correct. So sometimes we play the cheerleaders part, but whereas God has called us to be leading and determining how the game should be. Absolutely. So we'll talk about that and we'll talk about how do we say these plans are good. Uh, what are the lessons we learn yes. from the Old Testament? What are the lessons we learn from Mary and Joseph? What are the lessons we learn from Jesus himself? So mm -hmm. let's talk about it, Pradhan, and let's find out more about winning. Yes. And winning knowing that it's match fixed. 
Yes. It's going to be great talking about this, but don't miss the next part of the program of understanding how 2020 can be a winning game for you. Welcome back to this special episode of 2020. We call it the Match Fixing 2020. And uh, with us is Dr. Pradhan and we had a great start in understanding how the game is unfolding. But the good news is the game is not over. In fact, yes. the game is just begin. Pradhan, now we were speaking about 2020. One side, yes, we have a great year. God has good plans for us. Yes. On one side, 2019, lots of ups and downs, yes. lots of unanswered prayers, lots of uh, struggles, yes. lots of challenges. Uh, if God has good plans, my fundamental question is, why challenges? That's the question. Ashwin, we must trust God. Okay. Because sometimes what is happening around us, it looks as if it is out of God's control, but it is not. Mm. Let, me, it, let, let us talk about Joseph. Joseph was a good boy, mm. faithful, loved by father. One day his father sent him to look after or see where his brothers are. Right. He went there. They were not there. Faithful boy. So he searched where they could be and he went there. Right. Good attitude. But his brothers had a wrong attitude. They were jealous. They caught him, threw him in the pit, sold him as a slave. Correct. What we need to realize is that is what took him to Egypt. Mm. That is what furthered the plan of God in the life of Joseph. Mm. For God, the definition of success is about moving in right direction. So moving in the right direction is the definition of success for God. Mm -hmm. So it's not, the situation could be tough, but yes. that determines, that doesn't necessarily determine your result. Correct. So it's in the toughness we have to cling on to the to, promises. Correct. Okay. See, Fine. he went to Potiphera's house. Yes. He was a slave there, but a faithful man. Yes, again he rose up there. He rose up there. His wife, that is Potiphar's yeah, wife, yeah. had a wrong intention, but he had the fear of the Lord. So character. He resisted. Correct. He was a man of a good character, a righteous character. Mm. What was the result? He was falsely accused and thrown in the prison. So from, from, from being sold to thrown into the prison. Thrown into the prison. Mm. But we must understand one more thing. See, Jacob was a prayerful man. Mm. His prayer did not protect Joseph from going into the pit and being thrown as a slave. Correct. Joseph was a man of God, a prayerful man. His prayer did not protect him from being falsely accused and being thrown into the prison. Okay. So what we need to understand is God is in control. Mm. I'll tell you one story. Okay. My wife, uh, she told me this story. She grew up in a small village. Right. One day, her cousin from the city came to visit. She, my wife was that time around five, six years old and the cousin was maybe around 10 years old. Right. Very naughty boy. Mm. While playing, he caught a snake. That was crate, which mm. is supposed to be the most poisonous snake in India. Correct. And with that snake, he was running behind the people, telling it will bite you and people were running and he was enjoying. So one uncle came from behind and hit on his hand and the snake fell down and ran and people went after the snake. This boy dropped down on his knees and began to pray. God, please protect that snake. I want to take that snake with me to Hyderabad. I want to play with that snake. Mm. I want to make friends with that snake. I want to show that snake to my friends. Now, mm. my question is, should God answer that prayer? Absolutely no. Many times our prayers are like that. You see, do not be discouraged if God chose not to answer certain prayers. Mm -hmm. Because what God is looking at is moving us forward towards fulfilling His purpose. Okay. His direction, that is where He wants us to move. Yeah, we can kind of see that unfolding in Joseph's life yes. also. You know, a man of uh, dreams and vision. But uh, at one point, he was able to only get the dream. Yes. But when he... By the time he comes to the palace yes. uh, to meet Pharaoh, he's able to interpret the dream. Correct. So the way I look at it is, yes, we need to, God has good plans, but there's a process in the... Absolutely. So the process. So without going through this process, uh, we sometimes tend to get the, want the result immediately. Correct. So let's talk about what, what would be the steps to understand God's mind. Is there, is there some key points which we can take away in this new year as we start the 2020? 
See, Joseph in the book of Genesis chapter 50 verse 20 said, he told his brothers, though you meant evil for me, God turned it for good for the salvation of many. Mm. What we need to understand is, even though it may look like we are not in control, we must know that God is in control. Okay. Now, think about Joseph sitting on the throne, looking back at what happened. He would be thanking God for being thrown in the pit, being sold as a slave, being falsely accused, being put in the prison. Everything would be happening sitting on the throne. Right. But imagine right there when you're thrown in the pit, you know that God is taking you there to the throne. You would be thanking God there. You wouldn't be crying, complaining, grumbling and murmuring. So complaining, grumbling, mumbling will never take us any, anywhere. Nowhere. In fact, it will take us backward rather than yes. going front. It will spoil our time. Okay. We would be giving devil the pleasure of stealing our joy. Oh, giving devil the pleasure of stealing our joy. Our joy. Yeah. So but the devil enjoys this. Devil enjoys this. Okay. See, but when your eyes are on the Lord and trusting that he has a plan for you, mm. you will rejoice in every situation. Okay. So coming from your own personal life, Pradhan, Understanding the scriptures and, uh, you know, you, you, you are an MBBS doctor who decided to not practice medicine, though you are a qualified doctor, but you took a, went to a higher calling of following what God wants. It's kind of a, you played the game of the umpire hmm. and you determine the success yes. of the game. But that's one side. But then from a viewer's point of view, my question is, this 2020, what do we learn as two key points or three key points that say, you know, if I pick these three points yes. and, and run my race, this 2020, I think my 2020 will be much better according to God's plan. So okay. that's my question. And since we are going to take a short break, we're going to come, come back to those two or three takeaways. Yes. Because there are a lot of people with questions who are watching. Uh, you know, yes, we read the Bible. Yes, there are a lot of great stories, yes. inspiration stories. But then my situation is not inspi inspiring yes. me to think 2020 will be great. So, I would like you to explain and let's talk about those three takeaways of okay. determining what would that good plan be? How can I understand God's good intentions for me and how can I walk that walk? And that's going to come after this short break. So don't miss the last part of this segment. Welcome back to the 2020 New Year special program. The question I asked Pradhan before the break is that, yes, God has good plans for us. But how do we say he has good plans for us? Yes, God is there with us, but then challenges are big. But we are making a statement saying this match is fixed. So we are going from a position of victory. It's nice to yes. talk about it, but let's dig deep and understand how do we determine that we are in a victorious position. Pradhan, as we talk about this, uh, it's nice to talk this part. It looks like a theory message to me. How do we break it down practically? What are the three or two key steps which you and I right. can follow as we walk 2020 to say that God has good plans? Remember, Bible tells God declares the end from the beginning. Okay. That's his character. Okay. When the game begins, he tells, okay, that's the victory. You're the winner. Mm -hmm. But when we're going through that, see, uh, in the book of Luke chapter 1 verse 28, angel came to Mary and he spoke something marvelous to her. Mm. He said, um, and having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women. Mm. Powerful combination. Yeah. Okay. Three key highly words. favored. <laughs> the Lord is with you. Blessed are you Correct. amongst women. When the angel spoke that to her, the journey began. Yeah. Tough journey began over there. Right. But the tough journey began with this particular promise. Now, immediately what happened is her stomach began to grow. Yeah. Okay. A young girl, not married, pregnant. People don't look at her kindly. Mm -hmm. But she had to remember what God had spoken. Mm -hmm. She had to trust that God is a faithful God. Mm -hmm. Joseph wanted to leave her, but God intervened. You see the faithfulness of God. And then took her immediately to fulfill the prophecy of God. They had to travel from Nazareth to Bethlehem. So you're, what you're saying is the key word is trust here. 
trust. So trust is not one sided, it's two sided. Yes. So we have to trust God, God has to trust us. God has to trust us. Many times it's it looks like it's one sided. Yes. You know, but there's a two way ticket here. See, when God takes hold of you, he wants to trust you right. to fulfill his promise. Correct. Now, he wants you to know that even though you walk through the valley of shadow of death, you are not alone. The Lord is with you. Correct. Even though the enemy surrounds you, in Psalms 23, he says, right. he will lay a table before you. Yeah. What God wants us is to trust him because he wants to trust us. And not 50% trust. 100%. 100%. Yeah. 100% trust. 100% trust. Now, I think I would like to just go back to the life of Joseph the dreamer. Yes. Um, situation is, is in the prison and uh, he tells the baker and the butler's dream. Yes. By now he's able to interpret the dream. Yes. And then he makes a comment saying, this is what is going to happen to the baker, this is what is going to happen to the butler. And uh, in exactly. three days, exactly that happens. Yes. But he requests the the he is requesting the butler. the butler saying when you stand before the king remember to talk to me tell the king about me, me. He, he uses Correct. the word remember, remember which is a very human thing yes which uh, joseph and in fact he's only requesting him that yes after all those unjust years and as we know and understand the story he Forgot. goes to the king he forgets the yes. whole thing time passes by and then, when the king has a dream, yes. then the butler remembers yes. that, hey, listen, I forgot that Joseph is there. Yes. This is the only guy who can interpret the dream. Correct. Now, my question is, suppose if God would have answered his prayer hmm. when, when the butler went out, yes. Joseph would have been released. Yes. But Joseph would have been an ordinary person where you and I would not have read about. Absolutely. So that's the so so the trust factor yes. is that God is in complete control in all situations. Correct. But it, the problem is this, uh, hmm. Pradhan. Imagine we are in Joseph's position. Yes. We have interpreted the dream. Yes. We want results immediately. immediately. So that is the block. Yes. So how do we tell our viewers saying, Yes, we all want results immediately, but how do we wait and trust God? So, waiting and trusting trust. God. Explain that process. Ashwin, what you have spoken is the most essential truth every believer must know. That is the timing. Mm. If Joseph had to be released before time, as you said, he wouldn't have fulfilled his destiny. Absolutely. That means God is not late. God is on time. Mm. Think even about Hannah. Hmm. She was a woman of God. She was praying. Everything was good, but she didn't have a child. Hmm. Why? Because Samuel the prophet had to be born at the right time. Hmm. See, God will do things, right things at the right time. And that is where we need to trust God. So this is the first point. Let's move to the next one. Yes. The next one is, do not walk by sight. Do not walk by sight. Now, think about Joseph. Mm. In the prison, the sight was not good. Mm -hmm. As a slave also, the sight was not good. Mm. Mary and Joseph walking or going 100, almost 100 kilometers in that 50 degree Celsius Pretty tough. On, the, on the back of a donkey. And no place to stay. No place to stay. Doesn't look good. See, what we think when God says you are highly favored and you are blessed and God is with you, we would imagine that uh, Joseph Rolls and Mary, would Rolls Royce would have come and air conditioned. Five star and, hotel. Yeah, five star hotel, but nothing. Mm. That's where people begin to doubt, is God really with me? Mm. See, when you trusted God, you also need to see that what you see with your eyes, what you hear with your ears may not be what actually God is working so it may look like God is not working, but, but actually he's taking you through the process. Through the process. See, Bible says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. It reminds me of another character in the Bible, one of the greatest character for three major mm. communities, the Islamic community, the Christian community, and the Jewish community. It's, it's Abraham. Abraham. All three uh, communities or religions uh, look at Abraham as a mm. great leader. And I always wondered, uh, you know, 
uh, when you say walk by sight yes uh, god tells abraham to leave the country and go, and go. it's basically he is telling him saying go but there's no two address yes so he is going without <laughs> knowing there's Where a two address yes and he has to uh, take a choice not yes. only has he had to go he has to convince his family and his yes. wife also and convincing wives you know so the point <laughs> is he has to take the whole package and go yes. and he is trusting 100% on God. So we're talking about that trust. Yes. And then the second point you're saying is you're also saying don't walk by sight, walk by faith. So here we see Abraham walking that faith. Yes. So that's the second point. What's the third point? The third point is remind yourself what God has spoken. Oh, reminding God's promise. Reminding. Why do God's we need to promise. remind God? God knows it. So why do we need to remind God? It's not for God. Oh, we are not, not reminding God. We are reminding, reminding ourselves. Oh, I see. I, do, I thought we are reminding God. <laughs> no. See, so think, for example, when Mary is going through those tough times, mm. it's very easy to get discouraged. Okay. Like Joseph, at that point also, he tells that uh, uh, butler, please, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, tell the king. Yes. It's human. Yes. Now, in when you're going through tough times, somehow we, we, tend to forget. we tend to forget. So we tend to forget our calling and our promises. Promises. So we need to remind ourselves, yes, I am highly favored. Yes, God is with me. Yes, I am blessed. So you keep on reminding yourself, declaring what God has spoken and keep moving ahead. What you said is so true when it comes to several of these characters in the Bible we see. Yes. Going back to Abraham, he stuck to the promise. Yes. And even after his generation, 400 years after Yes. Abraham, God fulfills what he promised he made for Abraham. Absolutely. I think that's because he stood these three points. Yes. So the first point you said about 100% trust. trust. Trust God. Yes. It's not 50. No. It's not 70-30. It's not 90-10. Yes. It's 100%. 100%. So which means it's a blind trust. Correct. Correct. It's not blind belief. It's blind trust. So there's a difference between blind belief and, and blind, blind trust. trust. So blind belief is different, blind trust is different. We'll talk about it in another program. Yes. What's the difference? Yes. But in this 2020, we're talking about blind trust. Correct. Right? The second thing you said. Do not walk by sight. Do not walk by sight. Which means what your situation around it may not may look difficult, but you keep walking. Correct. Trusting in God. Yes. Correct? The second thing. And the third thing you said was. Remind yourself the promises of God. Yeah. Keep reminding the promises of God. I think Bible is a great book to, yes. to, to actually not just read every day, but to live every day because Bible talks back to you. Correct. Have you ever seen the Bible talking back to you, Pradhan? Absolutely. You know, you know my, my name is written there. Your name is written there? Yeah. Yes. My past yes. name is written and my present name is written. Amazing. My past name of sinner is written. Mm. My pres present name, righteous, is also written in the Bible. Written. See, Bible talks to me. Correct. Bible talks to you. Correct. And that is the speciality of Bible, the word of God. Excellent. So three takeaways in this new year to live a victorious plan with saying God has good plans for yes. us. So let's trust in God, 100% trust. Let's not walk by sight, but walk by faith. And let's remember that God has a special promise for you. Yes. He has promised. He is not a God who says something and does something. Man may say something, but God, once he says, he has said it. Yes. And it will happen. So it's not that we need to remind God, we need to remind ourselves. Yes. So Pradhan, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I know this 2020 to our viewers will be great because if Amen. we follow these three principles. Mm. You know, the, um, I come back to the first story of the umpire. Yes. Umpires determine the game. Instead of we standing and, and umpiring and determining the ga game, we tend to be cheerleaders. Yes. Cheering and clapping. Correct. And God is telling us this 2020, you and I can determine the game. Amen. And we have to, because we are governed yes. by the rules of the Bible. Bible, yes. Like how the umpire is governed by the rules of the board of cricket, we are governed by the Bible. Amen. So the condition is if we live by the Bible, we determine the game. And our yes. game is match fixed because we are victorious. Amen. It was a pleasure talking to you, Pradhan, and I wish you a very blessed and a faith-driven New Year 2020. Thank you, Ashwin. Wish you the same. And to all our viewers, a very happy and joyful 2020 because you are more than a conqueror. conqueror. Thank you, and let's stay tuned and focus as we walk this race in this 2020. God bless you.